A statement from Brian Cox could stun. It would sparkle like a second sun in light of the fact that it's just 600 light years away. And it could be tomorrow. The red supergiant Betelgeuse could be going to detonate. Pictures show that Betelgeuse is totally darkened and entirely temperamental. Analysts all over the planet are enthusiastically anticipating this exceptional occasion. A good ways off of only 600 light years. We on Earth will have the option to see the display with our unaided eyes. When Betelgeuse detonates, it will sparkle more brightly than the whole system for a couple of seconds. Even weeks later, we can still see the remains of the cosmic explosion. What precisely will happen when Betelgeuse detonates? As indicated by astrophysicist Brian Cox, we will see a light so radiantly bright for a couple of seconds that it will seem like a second sun during the day. We may be dazzled for a couple of seconds and see a very bright flash. Assuming that the star detonates at night, it will be basically as bright as day for a few seconds. Betelgeuse is going to detonate. That much is sure. However, on an inestimable scale, without further ado could mean 100,000 years or even just one day. The insane thing is that Betelgeuse could already have detonated since the light from the cosmic explosion will travel through space for 600 years before it contacts us. We will just see the extreme splendor 600 years after the actual blast. This thought shows the extraordinary dynamics of the universe in an amazing manner. It will be invigorating for us when the cosmic explosion becomes apparent, and we are now following every single change in the star. In 2019 and 2020, the red supergiant Betelgeuse encountered a sensational decline in splendor, which accordingly became known as the incredible dimming event. This unexpected drop in brightness prompted the hypothesis that the star was going to detonate. Different specialists were sure that the star would become more brilliant in no time before the final event. Specialists eventually saw that the dimming was caused by a colossal launch of dust that hindered a portion of the star's light. Almost certainly, the aging star Betelgeuse experienced something like a mass ejection in these events which we likewise know from our own sun. A star launches huge amounts of material into the surrounding region. Betelgeuse is times bigger than our sun, and the amount of material was much higher. The darkening was caused, on one hand, by the dust cloud and, on the other hand, by the star experiencing cooling. In March 2024, the American Association of Variable Star Observers again announced that Betelgeuse had experienced a plunge in brightness of about 0.5 magnitude. Scientists restlessly and enthusiastically noticed the dimming since late January. This diminishing was likewise a sign that we are curious about Betelgeuse. Any change that is unusual can be a sign of the blast. Again, mainstream researchers explored seriously and ultimately found that the limit dimming was a direct result of the incredible dimming event of 2019 and 2020. Now we have spick and span investigations and reproductions from stargazers at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy showing that the tempestuous surface activity of Betelgeuse could likewise prompt optical deceptions. So, what is the genuine status of the red supergiant? and will we see the blast soon? The hypothesis of the double star suggests that while it has been demonstrated that Betelgeuse is well on its way to going supernova, it remains a mystery regarding what stage the red supergiant truly is in right now. Betelgeuse is not a typical red supergiant. It acts uniquely in contrast to different stars of this type observed in space, and there could be an at this point unknown reason for this. A portion of the star's characteristics does not fit the image, and thus specialists concocted an interesting hypothesis. Betelgeuse could be the aftereffect of two more modest stars converging. In this case, we wouldn't see one old star on its way to going supernova, but two. The star spins so rapidly and contains more heavy elements like nitrogen in its atmosphere than is the case with normal red supergiants. In a simulation conducted by cosmologists, it was shown that Betelgeuse could initially have been a binary system comprising two stars. One of these stars would have drawn in the mass of the other, ultimately leading to a merger. This cycle would have upset the internal material of the recently formed star and pushed the heavy elements into the upper layers, which would explain the strangely high concentration of nitrogen. The merger would also have sped up the rotation of the star. Normally, red supergiants spin significantly more slowly. However, the simulation possibly showed that the extra transfer of angular momentum can be explained by the merger of two stars. A counter-report also showed that the rapid rotation of the star could be an illusion. The activities on the surface of the star can lead to optical deceptions that, 
only look like an increasing rotation. Betelgeuse's real state is consequently incredibly challenging to assess. The main scientific belief at present is the activity of violent deep convective flows that are continually pushing billions of tons of material to the outer surface of the star and making the center increasingly unstable. Betelgeuse is likewise certainly in a late phase of its evolution. Researchers suspect that the star is currently going through the carbon burning stage, which normally lasts around 1,000 years. When this stage ends, Betelgeuse could detonate within many years instead of centuries, as initially thought. The re-established dimming of Betelgeuse in 2024 and the various fluctuations in brightness could be the first signs that the star is drawing closer to its end. Betelgeuse has a unique importance for us. It isn't simply any star. It's one of the most brilliant stars in the constellation Orion. And this has always had a great significance for humanity since our species has gazed toward the sky. This star has been especially enormous, red, and obvious. Betelgeuse probably swelled into a red giant more than a million years ago, so we don't know any differently yet. It's only recently that we have become aware of its idiosyncrasies and its destiny. The earliest records of Betelgeuse come from ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, where the star was especially revered as one of the most brilliant in the night sky. In the Middle Ages, Betelgeuse was mentioned by astronomers such as Tycho Brahe in his star lists. He described the star in the 16th century as bright and reddish and pondered what this meant. The precise scientific study of Betelgeuse began in the 16th and 17th centuries when telescopes became much better. Galileo Galilei, one of the pioneers of modern astronomy, observed Betelgeuse and studied its brightness variations in detail. Even then, much more powerful telescopes made more detailed observations possible. From the 18th and 19th centuries forward, William Herschel was one of the most significant astronomers of the time, and he classified Betelgeuse as a variable star that changes its brightness over time. The definitive breakthrough in our understanding of Betelgeuse came in the 20th century with the advancement of spectroscopy. In the early 1900s, astronomers were able to analyze the chemical composition and temperature of distant stars. Interestingly, the spectroscopic analysis of Betelgeuse showed that the star was a red supergiant in the late phases of its evolution. Edwin Hubble, known for discovering the expansion of the universe, also contributed to the study of Betelgeuse during the 1920s. Hubble utilized the newly developed techniques of astrophotography to study the size and structure of the star. During the 1950s and 60s, the invention of the radio telescope ushered in a new era. This technology made it possible to observe Betelgeuse in various frequency ranges, which in turn provided completely different insights into its physical properties and the star's atmosphere. Finally, during the 1990s, the Hubble Space Telescope revolutionized Betelgeuse's surface observations, and we saw the sporadic brightness fluctuations for the first time. Since then, scientists have categorized the fluctuations into several almost regular cycles. Starting from the beginning of the 21st century, we have had the next perfect technological development, interferometry. This allows astronomers to make very precise measurements of the surface of stars. Observations with the Very Large Telescope in Chile have shown us exciting pictures of sporadic surface movement and immense convection cells. For the first time, we have only recently learned the details about Betelgeuse, which makes it hard to make an accurate prediction. The latest observations in 2024 showed another significant dimming, supporting the hypothesis that Betelgeuse is heading toward a supernova explosion. Current advancements, such as high-resolution spectroscopy and computer simulations, now allow us to precisely track the exact state and future evolution of Betelgeuse. While Betelgeuse remains an object of great scientific scrutiny, the sequence of its investigation exhibits the advancement of cosmology and humanity's ability to develop in order to unravel the mysteries of the universe. What do we truly know about supernovae? Our science at times appears to be so self-assured, and it's easy to get the impression that scientists have genuine insights, yet, particularly with regards to the universe, many theories and conclusions are still based purely on speculation. We know the real essence of supernovae just as little as we can definitively examine them. Throughout history, people from many periods have seen enormous blasts of dying stars, but they have typically been misunderstood. 
The first recorded observation of a supernova dates back to 185 AD when Chinese astronomers noticed a visitor star in the constellation Centaurus. The brilliant guest was visible overhead for eight months and then vanished. Again, in 2006, the brightest supernova of all time was seen by astronomers worldwide. Records from China, Japan, and the Middle East show that the supernova now known as SN 2006GY was so bright that it cast shadows at night and was clearly visible during the day. This star might have been about as bright as scientists anticipate Betelgeuse to be. Another famous historical supernova occurred in 1054 when Chinese and Middle Eastern astronomers noticed a new source of light in the constellation Taurus. This supernova left behind the beautiful Crab Nebula, which is frequently depicted today. In 1572, the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe saw a supernova in the constellation Cassiopeia. His detailed records of the supernova SN 1572 were somewhat more advanced because he was one of the first to recognize that the sky is not eternal, as Aristotle had asserted, but is subject to dynamic changes. Johannes Kepler then presented the concept of the supernova in 1604. Kepler observed a celestial nova in his astronomical journals and believed that he had seen the birth of a star. Kepler's supernova was the last in the visible spectrum of the Milky Way that could be seen with the unaided eye. Essentially, we have only known what supernovae truly are since the introduction of spectroscopy in the 19th century. Dying stars and their explosions continue to be a subject of intense study and interest, revealing the ongoing mysteries of the universe. It's significant to note that the study of supernovae and stars like Betelgeuse has profound implications for our understanding of the universe. Each supernova provides critical insights into the life cycles of stars, the formation of elements, and the dynamics of cosmic explosions. When a star goes supernova, it scatters heavy elements into space that are essential for the formation of new stars and planets. This cycle contributes to the chemical evolution of the cosmos, affecting the formation of future celestial and planetary systems. Additionally, observations of supernovae help astronomers calibrate cosmic distance scales, improving our understanding of the universe's expansion rate. For example, Type IA supernovae, which occur in binary star systems where one star is a white dwarf, act as standard candles due to their predictable brightness. By comparing the observed brightness of the supernova to their known intrinsic brightness, researchers can estimate the distance to their host galaxies, which is crucial for determining the rate at which the universe is expanding. Technological advancements in cosmology, such as space-based observatories and advanced spectrometers, have allowed for more detailed investigations of these cosmic phenomena. Instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, are expected to provide extraordinary views of distant supernovae and their remnants, offering new insights into the early universe and the formation of the first stars. Moreover, the study of supernova remnants, such as the Crab Nebula, provides valuable information about the aftermath of these explosions. These remnants serve as natural laboratories for studying the behavior of matter and energy under extreme conditions, helping to validate theories about cosmic evolution and the fundamental forces of nature. Overall, the ongoing investigation of stars like Betelgeuse and the subsequent supernovae represents a unique field of research with the potential to uncover the deeper mysteries of the universe. Each discovery and observation not only expands our knowledge, but also enhances our fascination with the complex and ever-evolving cosmos in which we dwell.